this uh, sulfonyl ureas are the oldest used molecules for treatment of diabetes as we all know after the insulin and we all know that there's a cor strong correlation between cardiovascular disease and diabetes and it is the leading cause of death in diabetics and um, previous studies have shown that actually the macrovascular outcomes are not decreased with glycemic control but now we have the follow of the eric and ukps trials both in type 1 and type 2 which have shown that early glycemic control intensive glycemic control has a legacy effect and even the macrovascular outcomes are decreased in patients if there's early strict glycemic control that is very important it is not after the complications which have uh, occurred that you control the sugars and land in complications as shown in accord and abat trial so that uh, that is the significance of this slide and um, that's what i'm speaking there was a lot of reduction in microvascular outcomes but the cardiovascular disease outcomes uh, were minimal in the initial trials but now we, we know that even the cardiovascular disease can be decreased by the glycemic good glycemic control in an early stage so basically these are the oldest molecules after insulin and they have been since 1950s after insulin this is a first oral agent to be used so we have lot dearth of data unfortunately the recent uh, molecules have uh, made this molecules look bad but actually we are going to uh, see some data showing that these sulfonyl ureas are safe even in cardiovascular disease and um and actually we have now we are not using the first generation we are using the second and third generation mostly we are using the third generation called glimiparide and which has lot of safety data in cardiovascular disease and we have to remember that all sulfonyl ureas are not the same they differ in the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics the duration of the action the renal safety some some molecules like glycoside have antioxidant properties which they say was the, was one of the reason for uh, um, the uh, the molecule doing well in advanced trial but they differ uh, pharmac kinetics and pharmacodynamics would differ too and cannot generalize all the effects. Um, uh, the, why the uh, sulfonyl ureas have uh, uh, different effects on the cardiac myocyte? Uh, if you know the mechanism of the uh, action of the sulfonyl ureas, actually they act by closing the potassium channels in the beta cell. So when they close the potassium channel, the membrane gets depolarized and the calcium uh, channels open and thereby insulin exocytosis is there. But unfortunately, some sulfonyl ureas, we have different kinds of sulfonyl urea receptors. The sulfonyl urea receptor 1 is present in the pancreatic beta cell, whereas 2A and 2B are present in the uh, uh, cardiac myocyte. There are some sulfonyl ureas which uh, interact with the cardiac myocyte's sulfonyl urea receptor, thereby closing the potassium channels in the uh, cardiac myocytes and thereby hindering the ischemic preconditioning. This was reported mostly with the, that's what is shown in this slide. Um, there is a closure of the Unfortunately, we don't have the uh, pointer, but uh, you can see in that cardiac myocytes, when you close the potassium channel, the ischemic recondi preconditioning is impaired, and thereby it leads to increased mortality in patients who already have a cardiac disease. This is what I said. The older uh, sulfonyl ureas, like uh, uh, gl glibenclamide, also used to block the uh, sulfonyl urea receptors on the cardiac myocyte. Even the newer ones, like glimiparide, do block, but they bind to a different subtype of the sulfonyl urea receptor, thereby they do not close the potassium channels in the cardiac myocyte and thereby do not hinder the ischemic preconditioning. The main uh, problem with sulfonyl ureas came with the UGDP trial in, in 1950s which was terminated early because it showed increased cardiovascular mortality with sulfonyl ureas and that was the reason from then on sulfonyl ureas were la labeled bad for cardiovascular disease. But now the UK PDS was the first trial in 1998 to show that uh, intensive therapy was associated with reduced microvascular and also the follow-up study that there is decreased microvascular outcome ischemias in patients with heart failure and sulfonyl ureas the most common side effect is weight gain with, uh, which uh, increases the other uh, cardiovascular risk factors like hypertension and the cholesterol. So this is what I was telling the ischemic precondition uh, because of the um, uh, uh, blockage of the potassium channels. Glibenclamide is the most uh, notorious molecule which is uh, uh, hindering the ischemic precondition but this is not being shown with the other latest sulfonyl ureas like glimiperi and the glycoside. So they are safe to use in the uh, patients with cardiovascular disease. Initiating treatment with glibenclamide or glipizide is associated with increased risk of CAD when comparison to glycoside or glimiperi. And even in the, when there was an analysis, uh, the glimiparide showed the least mortality when compared to the glibenclamide, as you can see. And the similar studies, when there were also comparisons between different molecules among sulfonyl ureas, glimiparide may be preferred sulfonyl urea in those with underlying coronary artery disease. And, com and there was also a trial comparing with metformin, and they also, because we know metformin is one of the safest molecules to be used in patients with cardiac disease because of its favorable profile on many factors. But compared with metformin, sulfonyl 
definitely that did not significantly affect all cause mortality in a large analysis. So we are sure that sulfonyl ureas are definitely safe, provided the recent sulfonyl ureas are being used. And actually, they've also done one trial where they, in, after metformin failure, they added insulin or a sulfonyl urea. And in this in these patients also, they've shown that patients who were initiated on insulin had more mortality than patients who were in, initiated on sulfonyl urea. So, uh, in, as you can see, the outcomes were bad in patients who were on insulin rather than sulfonyl urea. So, we have trials with metformin and insulins, which are the mo major uh, molecules used in treatment of diabetes, and we know that sulfonyl ureas are safe. So, among patients with diabetes who were receiving metformin, the addition of insulin compared with the sulfonyl urea was associated with increased hazard of composite uh, cardiac, non -car fatal cardiac outcomes. This was a large analysis of 18 trials of about 1 lakh patients in the Lancet in 2015, and they have in fact shown that glycoside and glimiparide are in fact decreasing the cardiovascular events when compared to the older generation sulfonyl ureas. So if you are going by the modern sulfonyl ureas, what we say, they are safe to be used. Unfortunately, they should not be abandoned because the cheapest available agents when compared to dp 4 and GLP and SGL2, which most of the patients in India still cannot afford. And this is what I was telling, the UK PDS follow-up trial, after 10 years, the results were, uh, results, uh, were released in 2007, and actually even patients who were on sulfonyl urea in, in, in the initial treatment also showed a decreased cardiovascular mortality, unlike what was taught earlier. And, and in, remember, in UK PDS, it was one of the oldest trial, and 50% of them were using uh, older ones like tolbutamide, 25% were using clopropamide, and only 10 to 15% were using glibenclamide. But still, they showed good outcomes even in the UKPDS style. Similarly, um Similarly, the ADVANCE is a major pivotal trial supporting the use of sulfonyl urea. Glycoside was the molecule used in this, and it has been shown that patients who are on uh, glycoside in, the, in this uh, study, they have decreased the cardiovascular events, not significantly, but the microvascular uh, events came down by a very good amount. And the follow-up data of ADVANCE also showed similar data that sulfonyl ureas are safe to be used in patients with cardiac disease. And the Vetin uh, FS diabetic trial, which included patients who were very old, and in this, they gave glimiparate for patients if BMI is less than 27 and metformin if BMI is more than 27. Um, and there was less dropout, so this was a very good trial. And these patients also, uh, the intensive therapy, there was decreased mortality and cardiovascular outcomes. And in this also, sulfonyl ureas were the major molecules to be used. And there was an analysis, second line agents for glycemic, last two slides. Sir. So the researchers employed statistical model. They not only showed the uh, hypoglycemia, weight gain, they also caused, uh, uh, analyzed the cost effectiveness. And in this, they've shown that um, the regimen with sulfonyl urea ensures significantly lower cost per quality of life and resulted in longest time to insulin dependence. And they were the second best option after insulin in these patients. And so basically, I go with sulfonyl ureas even if they're judiciously used and take care of the cardiovascular factors and the renal risk factors. They're, because they're time-tested, they have multiple formulations. You have a lot of molecules and the dosage can be varied widely, unlike the newer molecules where the dosage range is very minimal. The cost is very minimal. Minimal side effects if given judiciously in selected patients and provided effic proved efficacy in controlling hyperglycemia when compared to all other new molecules now and proved efficacy in reducing microvascular complications. So oldest non-insulin and main therapy. And therefore, uh, you, when you choose a saccharide sulfonyl urea for, uh, for a patient with cardiac disease, go by the efficacy, go by the safety data, the convenience of the patient, the tissue specificity, and neutrality with respect to the beta cell. And such a careful choice would not risk your patients to increase risk of cardiovascular disease. Thank you very much for a patient hearing.